My dear friends, on this, I suppose, very cold uh, midwinter morning, I welcome all of you here to St. Joseph's as we come together to pay our last respects to the late uh, Jimmy Gilogli. Uh, I suppose Jimmy spent his final year in Latham Crescent, but he's very much a native of Duroc and, um, and of course spent uh, the majority of his life in uh, London. And uh, in gathering this morning in prayer, we do so in solidarity uh, with uh, his family, with Mary Ann, Alice, Helen, Sarah, Cormac, and Owen. And uh, we also uh, remember deceased parents, John James and Catherine, and also deceased sister Catherine Jane. And uh, we do so uh, the sense of, I know that we're at the time of the year, coming up to Christmas, and uh, death is definitely not on our minds. In fact, anything but is the denial of death almost at this time of year, because, like I say, it's midwinter. There's most of the uh, nature look out in the countryside, a lot of it has died away. Uh, animals and birds and so on are struggling to survive. It's also the darkest time of year. That's why, you know, so much emphasis on lights, on our Christmas lights. But nevertheless, we gather in prayer, gather conscious of that we're in Advent and uh, the word that hangs over, one of the words that hangs over Advent, very much part of it, is Emmanuel, God is with us. So we ask the day of the Lord that we have mercy on the soul of Jimmy and that he may bring hope and consolation to his family. So in that spirit, uh, we now kneel and uh, we begin our prayers. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. And as we gather to commend Jimmy to the mercy of God, we begin by commending ourselves to the same mercy. And together we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. And therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, for all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. And we pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and the happiness of your saints, give, we pray, to your servant Jimmy, for whom today we perform the paternal offices of burial, a share with your chosen ones in the blessedness you give, so that on the day of resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. So we ask you now to please be seated and we listen uh, to the Word of God, uh, readings uh, from uh, the Scriptures and the read by Cormac and John. And so, and the psalm will be sung uh, by Eleanor. A reading from the Book of Lamentations. My soul is shut out from peace. I have forgotten happiness. And now I say, my strength is gone. 
that hope which came from the Lord. Brooding on my anguish and affliction is gall and woodworm. My spirit ponders it continually and thinks within me. This is what I shall tell my heart and so recover hope. The favours of the Lord are not all past. His kindnesses are not exhausted. Every morning they are renewed. Great is his friendship. My portion is the Lord, says my soul, and so I will hope in him. The Lord is good to those who trust him, to the soul that searches for him. It is good to wait in silence for the Lord to save us. The word of the Lord. St. Paul to the Romans. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized in his death. In other words, when we were baptized, we went into the tomb with him and joined him in his death, so that Christ was raised from the dead by the Father's glory, we too might live a new life. But we believe that having died with Christ, we shall return to life with him. Christ, as we know, having been raised from the dead, will never die again. Death has no power over him anymore. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John.
Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and anyone who comes to me I will never drive away. For I have come down from earth not to do my own will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. This indeed is the will of my Father, that those who see the Son and believe in him may have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear friends, uh, not long after I came here, and it was around the time, I suppose, it was a period before and afterwards, but um, there was a religious uh, shop in Monaghan, Veritas. It's, uh, Veritas is the Catholic, I suppose, uh, I suppose communications is a part of it to have a number of shops, mostly with books, liturgical materials, but also of late they've got into, you know, pictures, statues and religious items. But anyway, uh, Monaghan sort of decided to have something of a, a bit of a, an art or an icon uh, gallery. But th there was one particular icon that caught my attention. It was an icon of the nativity. Uh, and I don't know how many times I was in the shop, you know, but it was still up there and it was going and going on me. I suppose you could nearly call it a sort of a religious lust, <laughs> something like that, you know. But then, anyway, um, after about a year here, I bought it. I suppose it was, it was nearly 200 year old, by the way and the cost had been putting me off, but it, it grew me the extent that, and I have it, and uh, I, 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 well, it's, it's up all year round, but at Christmas time, it's my crib. It's a, an Eastern uh, icon. Uh, as far as I know, it comes from Russia, Russian Orthodox Church. And the difference between uh, Eastern icons and, say, ours are Catholic uh, imagery and pictures is, is, is hugely different. I find that ours is sort of free plan, uh, where their icons are full of meaning and hidden messages that, you know, sometimes it's hard to pick up. First of all, in the Eastern Orthodox churches, icons are visual representations of the Word of God. That you know, and that is why they say in their terminology that an icon is written; it's not drawn or painted; it's written. But anyway, the um, icon of the Nativity is largely based on the crib, you know, the, of St. Francis that we have on our churches. But there are a number of, you know, things that you'll notice. First of all, it seems to be coming out of like almost, you know, uh, a wrapping type of thing. It's, it's uh, an image of something that's being unfolded, being revealed. And straight away you get the message from it that this story and this scene is a gift, a gift from God. Now, there's other things but I'll not go into, but there's also another aspect that you could certainly almost look at you, but you might notice it, is the manger itself, the manger in which the baby Jesus, the bambino, is lying in. And actually, it is in the form 
or the shape of a tomb. And straight away, what the icon is telling you uh, about this child, that this child is born to live, was also born to die. And I think that this is something that very often that we put to the back of our minds and don't think about when we think about life because life is also about death. Living and dying walk hand in hand. Most of you here today would be, I suppose, either older or around the same age as myself, maybe a little bit younger in some cases. But, you know, we have lived and we've also died a number of deaths. Every change in our lives is a death. You know, and indeed, every change is a preparation for the great death that it you know, that we will face at the end. And there's one thing that as we get older, and I know that I'm going to, you know, appreciate more and more, is our own incompleteness, and indeed at times our own, you might even say, dysfunction, that no matter how well you intend to live your life you'll always fall short no matter whatever you hope to achieve it never, never satisfies you and right up to the end there's this disease, this ill at easiness this you know, dissatisfaction and uh, I was struck recently when I heard an interview on the radio by the writer, the author, Michael Harding. Uh, he writes, you know, the past number of years, largely autobiographical stuff, but he has just been through a very seriously, a serious illness, the age of 69, just a year older than, than Jimmy. And uh, again, he's reflecting on that same thing, that this has brought home to him the fragility of life and that he's now, you know, a lot closer to the end than the beginning. And he knows that his life, you know, is incomplete. And uh, he has had to acknowledge, and by the way, Harding's been through in religion, been up and down, quite a number of cul-de-sacs. He's a former priest, in fact a former curate in my home parish of Knocknini at one time. But he says he has to accept now, despite all his struggles of faith, that life can only be completed by God. And uh, for us, and indeed thinking at this time of year, the Christmas story, the nativity, can only be completed by God through Jesus Christ, through his mercy. And that is why when we come together in our funeral liturgy, the number one you know, priority, it's not the only thing of the liturgy, but the number one priority is that we commend the deceased to God's mercy because all of us when we go that we need God's help to complete our lives. I suppose that was also the Catholic understanding of purgatory even though purgatory is talked about very little if not at all, uh, nowadays. Purgatory is God completing 
what we have failed to complete in this world. So it is that confidence of faith that we uh, today give over to God, to God's mercy, uh, the soul of Jimmy Gilogley. Jimmy was born on the 31st of August 1954 in the Glogley family, I think one of eight uh, siblings. He went to school locally here in Black Bog and then to St. Mary's in Irvinstown. And following his education, he went to Reading in England at the age of 19, where he became an accomplished machine driver. He returned back to Ireland and studied mechanical engineering at uh, the Tech in Enniskillen after which he returned to London, where again he took up his employment as a machine driver, where he was in constant demand. And he lived, as I say, the majority of his life there, returning back home last year as his health was deteriorating. And uh, luckily, he got a house in Leighton Crescent and that is where he lived up, uh, well, let's say his final days is actually, with the exception of about three days at the end, which was in the Swa. Jimmy was a big hearted and a generous man, particularly in giving to various charities. I suppose, I don't know how to interpret this, when he actually said the rosary, or his own interpretation of the rosary, but you could hear it if you crossed his path. He took no prisoners, and was very much, and always, and indeed even in his illness, very much his own person. He would be sorely missed by his family, and by all who know him, knew him. I know, okay, he wasn't a great man for doctors or for nurses or whatever, but at the same time, family are very grateful for the care that he was given, and particularly those last three days of his life in the spa. To Mary Ann, Alice, Helen, Sarah, Cormac, and Owen, and all your relatives and friends, we convey our deepest sympathies. In his soul and all the souls of the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. So please stand, and we will now offer the prayers of the faithful, Darren, Claire, Caroline, Declan. As we gather in sorrow the death of Jimmy, we turn to you, Lord, help of the helpless in prayer and petition. Today we commend the soul of Jimmy to your everlasting love. May he live forever in your peace and mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Today we pray for Jimmy's family, especially his brothers and sisters, Marianne, Alice, Helen, Sarah, Cormac and Owen, his nieces and nephews, and all relatives and friends. May God give them the comfort and strength they need at this difficult time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all those who have cared for Jimmy during his illness, including the doctors, the nurses, who tended to him at home and in hospital, 
May they be rewarded with their gentleness and compassion. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all the deceased relatives and friends. We pray especially for Jimmy's parents, John James and Catherine, and his baby sister, Catherine Jane. May Jimmy be reunited with them in God's kingdom, where there is no more pain or suffering. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all those who are suffering with ill health at this time, especially the terminally ill. We remember all other families who are grieving. May they experience the love and kindness of the Lord who journeys with them in their trials. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for all immigrants and immigrants, especially all who will be separated from loved ones this Christmas. Console them and reassure them with connection with their families and friends. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And uh, we take a moment uh, also in remembering the dead. We remember uh, Pat McRae from uh, Pedico, who uh, died yesterday and whose funeral will be on Wednesday at 11 o'clock. We're also conscious too, uh, a very sad funeral today in uh, Kinali, uh, Joanna Hogg, young girl who was uh, knocked down uh, after she got off the school bus last week, a 14 year old girl. So we think of these and we think of their families this very sad time. Lord, hear us. Father, we conclude our prayers by making an act of faith in you, the one who always guides and leads us through the darkness of grief to the dawn of new life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray now, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray, to your servant Jimmy, on whose funeral day we offer the sacrifice of conciliation, so that, should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man he chose to die, so that in your sight we might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the Jewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held his word to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one but the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Larry our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember your servant Jimmy Galogli, whom you call from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. So now at our Saviour's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, and thou be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In the name of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, and our worries should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that your servant Jimmy, who the day has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin, and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, uh, as we now get ready to proceed to the final combination and farewell, uh, I would like to say a word of thanks to the Globally family for uh, having everything uh, well prepared uh, for this morning's funeral. Uh, for the readings, of course, read by Cormac and, and John, the prayers to the faithful, Darren, Claire, Caroline, Declan, and uh, we had uh, Caroline and Sarah as Eucharistic ministers. Uh, the singing and music, uh, thanks again to Eleanor and uh, Vincent. And uh, here in the church, thanks to our sarcastant, uh, Eileen, uh, for having the church ready. And of course, as always, too, in occasions like this, thanks to our undertakers, uh, Claude and, uh, and, and Patsy. And uh, also, uh, as you know, Jimmy's uh, remains will be brought to uh, Muncha for burial in the family plot. But um, regarding sympathising, we will have um, the offer of sympathies here in the church. It's uh, very inclement, and indeed there are still uh, just apologies. We did uh, get around the church both salted and gritted, but we ran out of, of, of on Saturday. We thought that the McCaffrey's Quarry might be open on Saturday morning, went up and found it was closed all day Saturday. So... Um, we, 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 we have to, to, to wait until um, sometime later get it completely uh, graded. So I'd ask you to take great care. But in the meantime, sympathising will be inside the church and afterwards when uh, Jimmy's remains are brought outside to the hearse, we will proceed immediately uh, to, to Muncha. Also, as usual, bathroom facilities are available uh, over in uh, the Paris Centre. So now we uh, get ready for the uh, right of final combination and farewell. Before we go our separate ways, sorry, please stand. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our brother. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. So we now reverence the body of uh, Jimmy sprinkle holy water on the coffin and uh, we incense uh, his remains as well and uh, all these are a sign uh, of the sanctity of not just of human life but the sanctity of the human body and the human person remember the old teaching that uh, the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit
receive his soul and present him to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to his aid, hasten to meet him, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. In your hands, Father of mercies, commend our brother Jimmy in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, he will rise up with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings you bestowed upon Jimmy in this life. They are signs of those of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servants and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and we are with you and with our brother forever. Amen. And now you please be seated and uh, you have an opportunity to come forward to offer your condolences to the family. And uh, if you could come up row by row, uh, center aisles first and then uh, the side aisles after that, if you move over to the center and come up the middle aisle. And of course, exit, if you can, through the side doors. Uh, sorry, this door here in, in, in particular. And uh, there's also uh, some refreshments in uh, New Street in, in the Nimnus Bar, New Street in uh, immediately after uh, burial.
Uh, so please stand. And we'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, and thou be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us stay our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And in peace, let us take our brother to his place of rest. <laughs> 